There's a ton of great tactical flashlights on the market, and today we're going to be comparing some of the best models to help you decide which one is best for you. All these lights are going to have high outputs, long ranges, and good battery life, and they're primarily designed for professional users who might be in the military, law enforcement, security, and other first responders. But there is a significant interest for these lights in the civilian market. Most of these lights will have high intensity beams with tight hotspots, decent floods, and many will have strobe modes that will not only provide good visibility, but may also have temporary blinding effects on a potential threat, giving you an extra second to assess and act accordingly. As far as design goes, these lights should have strong impact, shock, dust, and water resistance, and strong bezels, which will not only protect the light, but can also provide a nice option for self-defense due to their striking capabilities. They'll also have very prominent high-quality switches that are easy to find in stressful situations and may offer direct access to turbo or strobe, and will allow the user to hold and operate the light with a hammer fist grip, which is optimal for striking and self-defense. There's a lot of ways these lights can be carried for optimal readiness, including a bell-mounted tactical holster. They can also be attached to the outside of a pack or a pouch with some kind of molly webbing. They can be mounted to various self-defense tools, pocket carried or kept close at hand in a place where you spend a lot of time that might benefit from having instant access to light. The lights we're going to be looking at in this video are three from Army Tech, including the Predator Pro, the Viking Pro, and the Doberman Pro. Two from Ace Beam, including the P16 and the P15 Defender. The Claris XT11 GT Pro V2 the Brynite PT-18 Pro Oathkeeper, the Ammo Torch XT-35, the Wubin T1, the Next Torch TA-30, and finally the Sofern SC-31T Pro. But before we dive in and check out some beam shots, be sure to smash the thumbs up button and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new here. All right, so we're gonna kick things off with Army Tech, and the one we're gonna be looking at first is the Predator Pro, which has a 1500 lumen output and a 501 meter max throw distance. It has a Cree XHP 35HI emitter, and we've got the white version here, which is going to be better for blinding people. And it's also got a slightly higher output and throw distance compared to the warm version. The hotspot is very distinct on this light, and there's minimal spill, so this would be a great light to assist with aiming, and would also be great for a mid-range weapon light setup. The Army Tech lights all have an identical button configuration and UI with a rubberized tail switch, which gives you instant access to turbo, and while the light is on, you can twist the head to reduce the output, and there's a tactical and hunting mode sets with option of accessing a strobe mode. Next, we have the Army Tech Viking Pro, and this one has a 2200 lumen output and a 288 meter throw distance. It has a Cree XHP 50.2 emitter, and this is the warm version. And in general, warmer lights are gonna be more efficient in rain and fog. They better convey the natural color of objects, and they're also gonna help reduce eye fatigue over periods of extended use, but you can also pick it up in a white version as well. The hotspot on this light is much larger than the Doberman, and it also has a wide spill, so it's going to be much better than all of the other Army Tech lights at close range. Another offering from Army Tech is the Doberman Pro, and this one has a 1500 lumen output and a 368 meter throw distance, which is roughly in between the Predator and Viking. This is the white version, which also has the Cree XHP 35HI emitter, which is the same as a Predator Pro. And the main difference in beam pattern here is the overall beam angle is much more narrow, and there's a very smooth transition between the hotspot and the spill. It's not a bad compromise for a mid-range light, and this is going to be a great light for illuminating relatively large areas up to a few hundred meters away. Next, we have the Ace Beam P16 Defender, which has an 1800 lumen output and a max throw distance of 484 meters and a peak intensity of 58,564 candela. It has a luminous SFT 40 emitter with a color temperature that appears to be pretty close to neutral and a customized TAR lens. The hotspot is relatively intense and it's definitely one of the best throwers in the group and the flood angle is ultra wide, so the light is very usable for walking around with, and it's a lot wider than most of the other lights here. The P16 Defender has a rubber tail switch, which you can use to turn the light on and off, and another flat tail switch, which gives you direct access to strobe, or you can use it to change the outputs. There's a tactical and daily mode set, and five different output modes for each set. This is the Ace Beam P15 Defender, which has a max output of 1700 lumens, and a 330 meter throw distance, the hotspot is relatively concentrated on this light too, and again, we actually have a really nice ultra-wide flood angle, similar to what we saw on the P16. So this would be another light that's gonna give you great close and mid-range visibility. The P15 has a single metal tail switch, which is different than the P15, and they also give you a very well-balanced mode set with five different brightness levels and also a strobe mode. A single press will turn the light on, and holding will allow you to cycle through the different modes and a triple press will bring you to a stroke. Next up, we have the Claris XT11 GT Pro V2, 
which has a max output of 3300 lumens and a max throw distance of 410 meters running a Cree XHP35 HD LED with a cool white 6500K color temperature. The hotspot is very large and intense and is quite well suited for mid to long range distances. And the beam angle is also quite wide, so it would be decent for more close range applications as well. This is the fifth generation of their tail switch design and features a dual button tail switch with a nearly identical interface to the Ace Beam P16. And overall, it's a great design with one touch turbo and strobe and multiple mode groups. And the contact areas on the switches are quite large and will work even if you're wearing gloves. This is the Brynight PT18 Pro Oathkeeper, and it has a max output of 2,000 lumens, a max throw distance of 360 meters, and an intensity of 32,000 candela. There is a Cree XHP35 emitter, and the color temperature is pretty close to neutral. The hotspot is large and intense, and is very reminiscent of the Claris we just looked at, and would be an excellent choice if you want to illuminate relatively large areas up to a few hundred meters away and the beam angle is pretty average. This light also has a dual tail switch design very similar to the P16 Defender, and the large switch is going to turn the light on and off, and the smaller one is gonna cycle through four different output modes while the light is on, or it'll give you direct access to strobe when the light is off. The Ammo Torch XT35 has a max output of 1800 lumens and a max throw distance of 666 meters. There's a luminous SFT40 emitter, which excels at throwing, and the color temperature is on the cooler side. The hotspot is nice and tight and it really stands out and surprisingly it is the longest thrower in the lineup and the beam angle is also relatively wide though it's pretty faint but it would be suitable for walking around with and illuminating the area by your feet. There's a single rubber tail switch here and a high, low and medium mode and a half press will also allow you to cycle through the outputs or you can also do a full press to cycle through. There is also a memory mode on this light so it will return to the last output you were using. Next up, we have the Wubin T1, which has a max output of 2,000 lumens, an intensity of 60,000 candela, and a max throw distance of 498 meters. And it's gonna run on this output for around a minute before ramping down to around 700 lumens. It has a luminous SST40 emitter with a 6,500K color temperature, so it's on the cooler side. The hotspot is pretty intense on this light, so this is gonna be another great mid to long range light but the beam angle is also pretty wide, so it's not bad for closer range use either. The T1 has a fascinating tail switch design, and pressing on one side will give you a momentary strobe, and a full press will turn the light on, and a side press will cycle through the different output modes. There's four different primary output modes, strobe and an SOS mode, and also tactical and outdoor mode sets. The next torch TA30 has a max output of 1300 lumens, a max throw distance of 240 meters, and it can run on high for about two and a half hours. We've got an Osram P9 emitter, and it's pretty close to neutral, but it appears to be slightly cool. The hotspot is not too defined here, and the beam angle is relatively narrow, so this is gonna be another one that's better suited for mid-range use. This is another dual switch design with a mode selector ring on the tail with access to three different output modes, a strobe and a tactical mode, and there's also a rubber switch with direct access to turbo, which is great for high stress situation. The Sofern SC31T Pro has a max output of 2000 lumens and a max throw distance of 206 meters. And this version has a cool white 6500K SST40 emitter, but you can also pick it up in neutral 5000K. It also has a relatively wide hotspot that's not too intense and a very wide flood angle similar to the Ace Beam lights. So this is gonna be another great option for close range use. There's a switch on the tail which turns the light on and off and a backlit switch on the side which you can use to control the output. And there's a step mode group and also a smooth ramping mode which gives you variable control over the output. And this UI definitely gives the user the most options when it comes to control. All right, so let's talk charging. The Army Tech lights, the Ace Beam P15, the Brynight PT18 Pro, Oathkeeper all run on proprietary charging setups that rely on brand or product specific cables. The main downside to proprietary charging setups is that it's a pain in the ass if you lose them, and they can also become a pain to keep track of when you start to amass a collection of different lights with different unique cables, but that's no big deal if you like to buy lights from the same brand, and oftentimes these charging setups offer better water submersion and protection compared to those flappy silicone port covers you've probably seen on other lights. And speaking of which, 
Those are the types of covers we've got protecting the USB-C inputs on the Sofern SC31T Pro and the Claris XT11 GT Pro. If you aren't too concerned about the possibility of getting your light wet and you're careful with these fragile covers, this type of port is actually really nice because the USB-C cables are so common and this method of charging is quick and could not be more convenient. The Wubin T1 aimed for the best of both worlds with the convenience of USB-C and they also protected it by inlaying it into the threads of the upper end of the tube beneath the head and you can just unscrew the light to access it and this is one of the most well thought out designs in my opinion. The Ace Beam P16 and the Nextorch TA30 V2 went a different route with their charging and there's no port on the body but they do come with batteries that have USB charging ports on the top and in my opinion these also provide excellent water resistance and durability and it eliminates a common point of failure on the light. Similarly there's no charging port on the Ammo Torch XT35 so you need a dedicated charger for this light but it does come with a double cell charger in the package. Alright so now we've come to the part in the video where I'll try to help guide you on which one of these lights you should buy. If you're looking for some really tough lights built like tanks, Army Tech is the way to go. Predator, Viking, and Doberman all offer 25 meter impact resistance and they can all be submerged up to a depth of 25 meters for up to 5 hours and these specs are significantly better than all the other lights in the lineup. I've done some extensive durability testing on their little brother, the Prime C2 Pro, and was very impressed by how well it held up. It's nice that they offer cool and warm color temperatures and as far as I'm concerned, the only downside is the lack of mode options and switching modes is a little bit weird, but if you don't care about different modes and want something simple, then this won't matter. Buy the Viking if you're primarily going to be using it indoors or close range, the Doberman if you need something for mid-range use, and the Predator if your focus is going to be for more longer range applications. You can also buy kits for mounting these lights to your rifle that include red and green lens filters, a quick release magnetic mount, and a magnetic remote switch. Out of all these lights, the one that I've personally gotten the most use out of over the last year is the Ace Beam P15 Defender, and not only is it extremely lightweight and pocket carry friendly, but it also has a super robust pocket clip which feels great in the hands and really helps me get a nice firm grip on the light. It also has a 35 day runtime on its lowest mode, which is far better than most of the other lights in the lineups, with the exception of the Sofern SC31. This could come in handy in an emergency situation. You can also buy accessories for mounting this light to a rifle with an M-lock or a pick mount, as well as a remote switch, a quick function switch, and a tactical ring. Ace Beam also has a fantastic build quality and excellent reputation for making high quality lights, and they're definitely a brand I can recommend with zero hesitation. If you want a light with a great throw that comes in a pocket carry friendly package, the P16 Defender from Ace Beam is the best option in the lineup. It's a better thrower than the P15 and it also has a slightly more robust design while still being quite small and the dual tail switch provides a great user experience. It also has a tough bezel with great striking capabilities and that combined with the instant strobe make it one of the best smaller lights for self-defense. It was a tough call but my favorite switch design has to go to Next Torch with their beautifully designed dual rotating switch and cycling through modes couldn't be easier or more satisfying, so if you care about ease of use, this is a great option to consider. This light is also very small and lightweight, and is a good option if you're considering incorporating a tactical light into your everyday carry, and a glass breaking bezel with direct access to strobe are also really nice touches. Next Torch also did really well with the accessories for this light with the FR1 ring, and also their V51 quick draw holster, which can be mounted to a belt or molly webbing, and it gives you rapid access to your flashlight. The V51 also acts as a hands-free operating platform because you can rotate the angle of the light and have it point in the direction that you're facing, which frees up your hands to do other things. If your primary consideration is a self-defense light, the Brynite PT-18 Pro Oathkeeper definitely is the best in the lineup. In addition to being another very well-rounded light with a ton of great accessories included, it's actually very heavy and sturdy and has the only tactical ring that's actually made of metal. And if you want a light that excels at striking and really packs a punch, this light is a clear winner. The weightiness of this light is also quite possibly its biggest downside. And the rest of the lights are quite a bit lighter and easier to carry. But if weight isn't an issue for you, then this won't bother you. And as far as my plans for this light are concerned, I'm debating between keeping this as a bedside or a glove box light. If you're looking for a weapon mounted option, this would also be very suitable as remote pressure switches and a nice variety of mounting brackets are available on their website. The Wubin T1 also excels in numerous categories and their switch design is very innovative and easy to use and may be a good fit for you depending on your preferences. There are also a lot of modes so the user experience is very customizable to meet your needs 
And if you like onboard USB-C charging, this is the best design of the lights in my opinion. It's also a very good thrower, so if you need something for mid to long range, this is definitely one of the top contenders in the lineup. If you're looking to save a few bucks, the AmuTorch XT35 is a great little light, priced right around $55 and the build quality is good and performance is also on par with some of the more expensive lights. It comes well accessorized in the box and my plan is gonna to be to keep this in one of my grab and go kits. The main downside with this light is the UI is a bit lacking and there are only three output modes and the lack of a strobe mode is also a bit concerning, but considering that this light comes in at close to half the price as many of the other lights in the lineup, you really can't go wrong. Also, it's surprisingly the best thrower in the group, so if you want a nice intense hotspot, this light definitely produces something special. If you want to save even more money, the most extreme budget-friendly option here is the Sofern SC31T Pro, and at the time of making this video, you can pick it up for around $35 on Amazon. The only thing that's really tactical about this light is the tail switch, as it lacks many of the other features that the other lights in the lineup possess, but it is quite lightweight and pocket carry friendly, and is a good entry-level option with similar performance specs to many of the higher-end lights we looked at previously. It does have a decent variety of modes and runs on simplified Andrew, and also, if moonlight modes are your jam, this guy is really tough to beat. If you like lumens and want a really high output light that's going to blow people away for the first few seconds of use, the XT11 GT Pro V2 from Chloris is going to be a clear winner. 3300 lumens is significantly more than any of the other lights here, and if you want to be able to blind somebody with an overwhelming amount of light or draw a lot of attention to yourself, this light will definitely do the job. They also did a great job with their switch design and these dual switch lights are easy to operate and they're definitely starting to grow on me. One downside here is that these lights run on an IMR18650 battery which are slightly more expensive and tougher to come by in my experience. It'd be great to hear your thoughts on which one of these lights is your favorite down below. And if you have any interest in picking up these lights and supporting the channel, there's links down in the description, which really helped me out a lot. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to the channel.